You know some evenings just start off like any other. I'm talking me time, the room's lit with that warm glow from the lamp, and outside, it's just rain doing its comforting patter on the window. You know, that kind of night where everything feels just chill? So there I was deep into a Netflix binge, probably on my third slice of pizza. Just a regular night, you know. Well, almost regular, until that knocking just about gave me a heart attack. I wasn't expecting any visitors, especially not with this storm going on. So I head over to the door, right? And there it was, a package all soaked and sitting at my doorstep. No label, no nothing. Just this damp box staring back at me. And I gotta say, it was kind of eerie, taking that thing inside, not knowing what was in it or who it was from. But, you know, curiosity, it gets the better of you. So there I am, this wet box in front of me. The air felt heavier, kind of electric, like before a thunderstorm, you know? I break the seal, lift the flaps, and man, I wasn't prepared for what I was about to see. Inside, nestled amongst bubble wrap were these figurines. And not just any figurines, mind you. They were people I knew. My sister, my best friend, my old college roommate, crafted with crazy detail, like down to the freckles and tattoos, man. So realistic, it sent shivers down my spine. I gotta admit, at this point, I'm more than just curious. I'm worried. I have this sinking feeling in my stomach, you know? That feeling when something is just... off? Yeah, so a part of me is freaking out, but then there's this other part, right? Trying to rationalize the whole thing, telling myself it's some kind of prank or something. I mean, it's gotta be a prank, right? Maybe one of my buddies got super into sculpting during the lockdown, or it's an elaborate advertisement for, I don't know, a new horror movie or something. But as I'm looking at them, I can't shake the feeling. They're just too detailed, too perfect. It's like having little copies of people I know, sitting right there on my table, staring back at me, silent and still. So I'm trying to shake off the bad vibes, right? Telling myself it's just a joke, but then... Then things took a turn that I couldn't have expected, not in a million years. I heard it before I saw it, this soft kind of rustling noise like paper being crumpled up. And when I turned my head, man, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. One of the figures, it was, it was turning to ash, just disintegrating right there in front of me. I watched frozen as it just fell apart, crumbling into this little pile of dust. The room felt colder the wind outside howling like it was morning or something. I didn't know what to do. I felt this dread just wrapping around me, squeezing tighter and tighter. I was paralyzed, man. Watching a piece of art turn to nothing, that's one thing, but this felt personal, invasive, like some boundary had been crossed that should never be. I had this gut feeling deep down that whatever was happening was, was really, really wrong. I was trying to, to make sense of what was happening trying to tell myself that it wasn't real, that it couldn't possibly be real. Then my phone buzzed. A message popped up. It was from my neighbor telling me something had happened, something bad. And my heart, man, my heart just dropped into my stomach. It was like a nightmare pulling me in deeper and deeper. It was about the person the figure represented, someone close to me, someone I cared about. They were gone, met a tragic end that night just as the figure had turned to ash. I couldn't breathe, couldn't think. It felt like the walls were closing in on me. I looked at the ash, then at the remaining figures, and it hit me. A horrible, gut-wrenching realization that this wasn't just a sick joke, but a curse. A curse that was picking off the people I loved, one by one, turning them into nothing but ash, just as it had with the figures. I couldn't just sit there, right? I had to do something, anything. But what could I do? Call the police and tell them what? That my friends are turning into ash figures in my living room? My mind was racing, heart pounding in my ears so loud it felt like it was going to burst. I grabbed the figures carefully, like they were made of the most fragile glass. I thought if I could protect them, keep them safe, maybe I could, could stop this nightmare from claiming more lives. I took them to the safest place I could think of, wrapped them gently in cloth and placed them in a steel safe I had. It felt like a fool's hope, but it was all I had, this desperate idea to shield them, 
to shield my friends from the dark force that was playing with our lives like a sadistic puppeteer. As I locked the safe, I felt a kind of hopeless prayer rise in me. This, this begging plea to whatever forces were at play, to spare them, to break this sinister connection between the figures and my loved ones. I was playing a terrifying game, and I didn't know the rules, didn't know how to win, just driven by this desperate need to save them, to save myself. I didn't sleep. How could I? I just sat there on my living room floor, eyes fixed on that safe, praying that when the dawn broke, this nightmare would break with it. But when the first rays of sun broke through, piercing the darkness with this weak morning light, my phone, it started buzzing incessantly, breaking the silence, breaking any hope I had harbored. It was like a punch in the gut, each message, each call bringing more tragic news. Friends, family, people I had known all my life, gone. Each loss hitting like a sledgehammer, a cruel confirmation that the ash, the figures, it was all real. I felt shattered, torn apart by grief and fear. The world around me was awakening to a beautiful new day, and yet my world had turned into a living nightmare, a hell where someone or something was collecting the lives of people I loved, one by one, turning joy and laughter into memories, into ash. Just when I thought I'd reached the end of my rope, the postman arrived. Another package. My heart raced as I tore it open, half expecting more figures. But it wasn't. It was a letter. It read, the cycle is complete. To break the curse, pass it on. A choice is yours to make. And nestled beneath the letter, a single eerily lifelike figurine of me. A choice stood before me one too heavy for any person to bear, to become a part of this sinister collection or to continue the cycle. It was a revelation that chilled me to the marrow, leaving me standing at a crossroad of darkness. But hey, this is where I turn it over to you, my fellow travelers in the strange and eerie. I'm curious, truly, what would you do in my place? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for joining me on this chilling journey. If you like this story, and want more twists and turns, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any scary stories tucked up your sleeve, share them in the comments below. If your story sets the eerie vibes just right, not only will it feature in an episode, but you'll also get a big shout-out from me. Thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one.